uh, first visit here to a little bit of heaven. And apparently I'm the only person who does not know you because <laughs> everybody seemed to know you when you walked in. So uh, good to have you here. I'm looking forward to what you have to share. I was here uh, for the Passover Seder this past year. Yeah, yeah. But I was about 300 pounds. No, I wasn't. No. <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, my name is Pastor Jim Gaffney, and first of all, let's uh, give an applause and some affirmation to all the people who've been up here so far, right? Yeah. Okay, see, and then when I'm done, you just do that again, and everything's cool. I'm, uh, I'm a new guy to Long Island. I was uh, unfortunately born and raised in Queens. So I hope you don't hold that against me. Okay, Forest Hills, what part? Huh? Whitestone, okay, very good. Rockaway, okay. All right, now that we named a bunch of places in Queens. Uh, I, uh, unfortunately, I moved out of New York when I was about 25. And I've been, uh, I've been serving the Lord for uh, many years but in Florida and in California. Florida, yes. Yep, I've worn a couple of different hats. I'm a, uh, I'm a father of two children, which is definitely a hat to wear. Isn't that right? Okay. Uh, I'm a retired pharmacist. Uh, I've been a recovery pastor and a care ministries pastor now for 29 years. And, uh, and then I went through a divorce. Ooh, okay. Yep. So uh, I've now, uh, I moved back to New York. Yeah, all right. Now I'm, a, uh, now I'm a drug and alcohol counselor and a marriage and family therapist who has uh, just graduated. And uh, so finally, I'm back in New York, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to serving the Lord here. Okay? What, what I want to share tonight is, uh, is a very simple principle that, uh, that I've learned many times throughout the years, uh, but one that was really underlined for me uh, even this past month. And uh, so when you walk out of here tonight, I want you to remember four words that were said, okay? Real simple. It's run to the roar. Run to the roar, okay? Run to the roar. And I'll, I'll explain. That's why I'm up here, to explain all this. You know, I can't just give you a phrase. And I mean, what, what kind of pastor would I be? You know, I've got, what, 45 minutes? Is that right? <laughs> no, no. This has, been a, this has been a season in my life of, uh, of celebrations. In, in May, uh, I graduated from graduate school, you know? I, I started it when I was 19, and I just got out this past May. <laughs> no, I got out of graduate school. I moved over to Beth Page, and then, uh, then on uh, July the 5th, what an honor I had. I had the opportunity to walk my daughter down the aisle to get married. I tell you, what a, what a life-defining moment that was. And then, unfortunately, the next day, I turned 59 years old. Yeah, that's a good year. OK. Yep. And then, uh, so I had my birthday, and then I had another birthday. And July 15th, I celebrated 34 years of being clean and sober in our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So you can sort of imagine, you can fill in a couple of pieces there that I haven't always been a really nice guy. Okay? Uh, but but, but God's, God's changed me. And he's changed me because I ran to the roar. I ran to the roar. Okay? So everything was really going well. And then August 3rd, I had a heart attack. Oh, that was good. Let's do that. And August 3rd, I had a heart attack. Oh! I'll tell you, I, I still have my... Uh, 
I still have my bracelet here. I actually do. Who, who, took, who took my bracelet? It's up here. There you go, see? See? This is a life-defining moment, let me tell you. Okay? Uh, you can look me up on Facebook, and, and God was all over this. I mean, I was praying because I was getting these heart pains and chest pains and stuff radiating up my arm, and I was just on my way to a gospel music explosion <laughs> in Central Park. You know, so I stopped with a friend and started to pray. You know, God, sort of show me what this is. Is this anxiety or whatever, you know, or was it bad pizza from the night before or... Or, or, or what's happening here, you know? And, and you, you know, I stopped praying, and I, I opened my eyes, and it said, Lenox Hill Hospital. <laughs> you know, but when you're dumb, you got to be tough. <laughs> because I said, it's just anxiety, and I started walking. <laughs> I had to stop two more times before I sort of thought, gee, that might be God that I was praying in front of Lenox Hill Hospital. Okay. Anyone else here who uh, misses God every once in a while? Okay. I have, a P I have a master's in marriage and family, but I have a PhD in how not to do life. Okay. But I run to the roar. Okay. And we all know as believers that, that God speaks to us in many different ways. One of them is he speaks to us through his word, okay? He, uh, he speaks to us uh, in this not sort of audible voice where all of a sudden thoughts are coming into our mind that we go, that was not me. Because <laughs> I'm not that clean and pure. I mean, <laughs> whoo, that... That must have been Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I know that one was not me. <laughs> you know, and, and then, and then uh, he, he speaks through, uh, you know, leaders in the church. He speaks through people that you don't like. <laughs> Those are the hard ones to listen, okay? He, he, speaks, through, he speaks through life circumstances, okay? And, and, and then if you're not listening, he has this sign saying, Lenox Hill Hospital. <laughs> but one of the ways that God really speaks is through his creation. Okay? And we are God's highest creation. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us down just a level, one level, into the animal kingdom. Okay? So just imagine the animal kingdom. Okay? No, no problem at all. Okay. Now, now let's go to the continent of Africa. Everybody there? Okay. All right. Well, if you're there, I can go at least another 25 minutes. <laughs> okay. Continent of Africa. Okay. The jungle. Okay. We got the jungle. Okay. And we got a lot of, we got a lot of critters in this jungle. We got a lot of animals. But... The king of the jungle. The king of the jungle is? And what do lions do? They roar! See? You're getting it. It all ties together. Okay? All right. So in the animal kingdom, okay, we all know that, that the, the lion is scary. The lion is mean. The lion is dangerous. Okay? I, I love that, uh, that C.S. Lewis quote from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where, where he goes, but Aslan, he's a lion. Is he safe? And the guy, they laugh and go, no. He's a lion. Lions aren't safe. But he's good. And that's Jesus. That is Jesus. Okay? He walks us through difficult situations. He doesn't just go, okay, you're, you don't have to do that. Okay? We go through all the same stuff in life. Okay? But let's look at lions for a second. Okay? Because we want to look at how lions, how lions hunt. 
Okay, so I want to give you a couple characteristics that I've written down about lions. Let's see, could I have that dictionary over there? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, late at night, you gotta, you gotta keep them laughing, you know? <laughs> When's comedy night? <laughs> Is that next Tuesday? <laughs> you know, I was supposed to be here on, uh, on August 1st. No, August 1st, yeah. And I, I didn't work, and then I had a heart attack about 36 <laughs> hours later. You know, I tell you, I don't do well with disappointments. You know? <laughs> okay, now, we got this picture. Are lions, are lions fast? Oh, yeah, they're fast. Okay, I'm going to give it. Are they strong? Yeah, they are strong. They are the, they are the king of the beasts. Okay, how about fierce? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, do they scare you? Yeah. And when they roar, what do you want to do? Yeah. Run the other way. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is go, hey, lion, come eat me. You know? No, you want to run the other way. But in this world, as believers, God calls us to do something different. So here's another couple characteristics. Are lions warriors? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about hunters? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know that. You know that joke about you know how does a lion eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You know. Usually takes about a year or two. Okay. Do lions have sharp teeth? Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. And uh, can they devour just about every other animal in the jungle? Yes, they can, okay? And on top of that, they have this, they've got this mane, and they're big, and they just look at you, you know, and then they roar, you know? And I go, I'm out of here. And you want to run the other way. But lions, like us humans, they have this problem. They, they age, it's something that comes a little older than you guys over there. It starts, it starts that age that you don't think you'll ever make it to. You know, like, like 35. Thir 35, all of a sudden, you've added 35 pounds right here. You know, and then, and then at 50, all of a sudden, who knows what happens to your hair. You know, it starts sticking up. And Do you like the hairdo? You know, I tell you, I used to have it normal. And then, and then my son looked at me one time. He said, Dad, it's not the 90s anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, the 90s? I'm from the 60s. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have it down to here with my beard on. You know? I, I do have pictures of that. Uh, okay. But the lion gets old. Yeah. And even, even the king, the meanest lion who runs the pride, gets old. Okay, so let me ask you some characteristics about an old lion. Okay, are they fast? No. no, they're not. No, they're not. The female young lions, you know, can beat them every single time. How about strong? You know, it's called uh, rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> And uh, lions get it also. And over a period of time, they, they, they'll look strong, but they're not. How about fierce? No. Well, they're big. And they're very scary looking, but they're not fierce anymore. You know, they're, they're worrying about how many tums they have to take today. <laughs> and are they warriors? No. But they have good stories. <laughs> they have great stories of when, when they were this warrior. I remember that year I ate two elephants that year, <laughs> you know? Okay. And do they have sharp teeth? Yes. No, 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 no. We're into polygrip land, okay, and dental implants, you know, when the dentures don't work. I mean, we're talking an old lion, okay? And, uh, you know, and the dental implants don't work if all your gums have been have been have disappeared through this thing called gingivitis you know i never knew what it was until they said you got it okay 
can they devour all the other animals? No, 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 no. Maybe if they were cut up in gum-sized pieces, they might be able to eat some of it, but then they'd get agita, and then who knows what would happen. Okay? But they still have the roar. And this is reality. I'm not making this up. I made up everything else, but, <laughs> but, but, but this part, this part I did not make up. Okay? The lions in the pride, they respect the king. And even though, you know, he'd get angina pains if he started, you know, running after a gazelle somewhere, he'd get about 40 yards and die. Okay? They still respect him and what they do. And they know his roar just, just sends fear down everybody's. So what they do, okay, this is really what happens. They, they position like the lion right here, the old toothless guy with big voice, okay? And then they take the young lionesses, and they put about four or five of them, and they put them about 300 yards over there, and one 300 yards over here, and another one over there, and so on and so forth. And when they find their prey, this is how they position and then they give that lion hand signal. Now, I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> <you know>. <laughs> Eat! <laughs> okay, Eat it, Joe's. Okay? And what happens is the old lion does his old shtick. You know? He roars! And what does the gazelle do? Runs away and goes right in to the grips of the fast lionesses. And that's, that's honestly how lions in a pride hunt. And they, they still respect the old guys. So remember that, okay? No. Because <laughs> I can roar, let me tell you. Okay? But here's the principle. In life, are we supposed to run away from the things that scare us? Okay, but who does? Okay. Okay? When, when life gets difficult, who naturally has a counted-all joy party, according to the book of James? You know, oh, I just cracked up my car. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. No, no, no. I want to run. I'm going to like, no, no, no. That wasn't my car. It's a bad dream. I'm going to go back down the street. Okay? Life difficulties we want to run away from. But in God, in Jesus, and Jesus is the Lion of Judah, okay? This, this isn't like Animal King Simba or whatever, okay? <laughs> Jesus, I mean, I don't know how Jesus can sing, but, you know. But, he's, but he's, he's not safe, but he's good. He's good, okay? And you don't have to run away from the roars in this life. In fact, let's put that, that thing together. I'm the old lion. Okay, you're the gazelle out here. I'm hungry. I want to eat you. I haven't gotten my AARP check right away. Okay, I don't want to go too fast. Okay, I roar. And you run to the roar. You face life's difficulties. You don't run away. You actually go, you know what? I believe that I could be more scared of what I need to face than if I really faced it, it would be worth it. And besides, when you keep running away from life's difficulties, what happens? You, you just keep redoing that test, you know? It's only, it's only when we allow life's difficulties, when we take them in, then they're gifts. They're supposed to make us complete lacking in nothing, strong. These are, this is what God says to us, okay? But every time I hear a roar, I want to run. And I, but I learned to do, and I did this with the heart attack, okay? I want to go, you know, I really want to go praise Jesus, and it's only seven more blocks to Central Park, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure I can make it. Uh, but I'll have to stop 47 times, but then I'm going to be okay. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to face the fact that 
I'm having a heart attack. Okay, I didn't want to face that. But when I did, it was unbelievable. I mean, I walked in, actually it was the back of Lenox Hill Hospital. I walked into the back of it to the delivery entrance. Okay? I told you, I don't do life all perfect, but, but I am forgiven. And, and I have great stories, and I've learned. Okay? Walked into the back of it and sort of say, uh, where's the emergency room? And, and the very nice guy he says, well, you got to go down 77th and over to Lexington. Then you got to go up about, and I looked at him and I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to make that, <laughs> honestly. And all of a sudden, this guy was out of his chair, had a wheelchair, and was, and was bringing me into the emergency room. And, and <laughs> I, let me tell you, I felt like I was giving a baby. <laughs> when they put these balloons in your femoral artery. <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Run to the roar. No, no, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> what do you mean you can't medicate me? <laughs> we got to make sure you're not stroking. That could be a good thing right now. <laughs> but, but within like 15 minutes, I, I was on the table... And, and God was saving my life, Amen. okay? And he's continued to do it, okay? So here's the principle, just four words. When life roars, run to the roar. Don't run away. Run to it, okay? Because if you run to this big old lion that just roars a lot, okay? Or you could have done a... And you would have been gone. And you're away. So, run to the roar. Thank you.